So on number five, we're looking at this graph here. And the first uh, question here is which function has the largest a value? So first thing we need to do is understand what the different parts of this a times b to the t are. So this is the initial value. And if I'm looking on a graph, that's going to be the y-intercept. So if I look at the different y-intercepts for the functions, I can see um, those things. So it looks like function b has the largest a value because it's the, um, it's the largest y value for the intercept. So the answer there is b. Um, which two functions have the same a value? So the ones that have the same y-intercept are functions a and c. Which function has the smallest b value? So again, on the b value, that is uh, telling us uh, if b is um, greater than 1, it's going to be exponential growth, and if b is less than 1, it's going to be exponential decay. So I know for functions a and b, we know that the b is less than 1 because those two are both the ones that have exponential decay. And if I look at function b, it decays at a, it decays faster than function a. So function b has the smallest b, that little b value. So the answer is capital B here. And then on the next one, which function has the largest b value? So I want to look for a function. Um, so I know for functions c and d, the b value is greater than 1 because they're both exponential growth. Um, and so if I want to look for the greatest b value, I want to look for the one that um, grows the fastest. And so if I look at function c here, it's doing this. And the growth rate is faster because it's getting steeper faster. So the answer for um, part d is the function capital C. Okay, number six, let uh, f of x equal that. Um, the question is, um, as x goes to negative infinity, what happens to f of x? In other words, what is the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x? So if I look at this function and I graph it, that might help us to see what's going on here. So I can see that my function is this exponential function, um, but it has this vertical shift at 5.4. So what we're going to have here is that at 5.4, we're going to have this vertical asymptote. Draw, draw it in there. And then uh, my initial value was 3.1, but I'm going to shift it up by 5.4. So if I do 5.4 plus 3.1, that's going to give me my intersection here, which is 8.5. And then I know that um, the 1.6 is greater than 1, so it's exponential growth. So it's doing something like this. And it's approaching as x goes to negative infinity. In other words, as we're traveling this direction on our x-axis, the y value is getting closer and closer to 5.4. So the answer is 5.4. So that's the y value that the function is approaching as x gets bigger, or um, as x goes further and further to the left. And then the question, does f of x have a horizontal asymptote? If so, what is it? And if I look at this, I can see there really is no horizontal asymptote. This is just going to go keep going up forever, um, but it's going to keep going to the right. Um, and so there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay. So on number seven... It says a five-year CD is open with $6,000 initial deposit at a rate of 2.9% compounded monthly. So the question is, how much money will there be in the CD at the end of five years? And so if I want to write down... Uh, so for this one, it says I have an interest rate of 2.9%. And so, whoops. So what I want to use here is I want to use um, this model where we have p is equal to p naught and then we have one plus the rate divided by the number of times it's compounded times the number of times times t. 
And so our, our number of times, since it's compounded monthly, our n is 12. And um, so I want to find out how long it's going to, five years, so that's our t. Um, so we'll have p is equal to 6,000, 1 plus 0 0.029 divided by 12 times 5 times, to the 5 times 12. Oh, sorry, I should have put 12 times 5. Anyway, the 12 is the n, the 5 is the t. Yeah. So we can compute that value. If I plug that into my calculator, I get 6,935.02. Um, and that's dollars. So that means that in five years, um, you have gained an additional $935 at, in interest. Um, then for the effective rate, really what we're looking for is this part of the formula. So we're looking for this part. Um, so we can we can compute that. So we have um, 1 plus the rate, which is 0 0.029, over the number of times, which is 12. Whoops, so which is 12. I put a 12 there. It's compounded 12 times here to the 12th. And if we compute that value, um, we get 1.0293. So we can say it's um, 2.2938, uh, I guess. So it's um, so really it's a growth of 2.94 percent growth. Okay. Uh, number eight. Suppose that uh, two milligrams of drug is injected into a bloodstream. Um, it diminishes that 4% per hour, um, so I can find my formula. So the 2 is that initial value, that's my A, um, and diminishes that 4% per hour, that's my K. Okay, so my formula is Q of T is equal to 2E to the negative 0 0.04 t. Um, find a formula of that form. So really I just need to find, write this as a number. So e to the negative 0 0.04 is equal to um, ninety point nine six oh seven eight. I round it. So Q of T equals 2 times 0 0.9608 to the T. Um, by what percent does the drug level decrease during any given hour? And so I just want to, um, so it's really this rate is the hourly rate. So this, this is telling me, so I know that 1 plus the rate is equal to 0 0.9608. So I can subtract uh, 1 from that. And I get um, point, the rate is equal to point th negative point three zero three nine two one, so it's three point nine two percent decrease. Okay, and then by what percent does it decrease in five hours? And so I want to do point nine six zero eight to the fifth. And then I want to subtract 1 from that. We eight one eight seven seven. So we can do 1 minus 3. Oh, I want to do that minus 1. Sorry. And I get negative 0.181. So it decreases by 18.1%.